What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, welcome to Zapata, Z-A-P-A-T-A, -A -A, Texas. Right there is Falcon Lake. Now you can't see it because it's on the other side of the hill, but it's right there. I'm gonna show you in just a second. First, I wanna give a huge shout out to this awesome Airbnb right here. There's our Tahoe, our rental car, and look at this awesome trailer that we got for the entire week. Jake's over here making us some jalapeno poppers with a little bit of onions and mushrooms and cream cheese. Oh yeah. Fresh jalapenos. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. I'm nearing a million and it will mean a million to me. Now I'm gonna introduce you to Ram Outdoors. My good buddy, Ram. If you guys follow along, we've caught giant gars with him. We've killed big white tails. We've killed javelinas. I've been to Mexico with him fishing at Lake Guerrero. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Certainly. Say it with the Mexican twang. Lake Guerrero. There you go. You guys, Ram's a good friend of mine and he owns and operates Ram Outdoors. The coolest thing about this Airbnb is that's Ram's house just right there. If you come here and hunt with him, you can stay in this Airbnb and holler at him right there. We got some coals going because we're going to make some fresh tacos. If I sound a little bit excited, it's because South Texas and Ram are two of my favorite things in the whole wide world. I don't know why I like Texas so much, specifically South Texas, I just love it. And all week long, we're literally here for a week. Yes, sir. We're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff. I don't know if we'll get it all in one video or two videos or three videos, but we're gonna film almost all of it and it's gonna be an awesome ride. Habanero, anybody? Hey, you know it's bad when Ram, who's pretty much full-blooded Mexican said, bro, what are you doing with the habanero? <laughs> Mm, that's right. I'm trying something different, folks. I cut it open, I took the seeds out, and I'm char grilling it along with some of the skirt steaks, some onions. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned by spending a lot of time in Mexico, and I have been all over Mexico, is put anything on the grill and it'll taste good. Right down there is the boat ramp to Falcon Lake. Again, this is our Airbnb, and right there's Ram's house. And why that's so important, if you come here and go catfishing with him, everything's close. There's no driving, it's so easy. You get the bait right there and you catch the fish right there. This morning though started out a little bit different. We've actually been here for two days. We deer hunted a little bit yesterday, saw a couple really nice bucks, just nothing I wanted to shoot. This morning though, we got up and did what I've always wanted to do. If you know anything about South Texas, you know a lot of it's high fence which isn't a really a bad thing because most of the ranches are huge, especially my buddy Marco who owns the Las Raices. It's a 4,500 acre ranch. So it being high fence don't really mean anything because the deer are wild. It's such a big, massive piece of property. But I've always wanted to do a South Texas low fence, completely wild, right on the Mexico border. The deer I shot this morning potentially could have came from Mexico and ended up where he got shot. Now we are gonna go catfishing in just a minute, but this morning we went on a deer hunt and I wanna take it back to that. He hooked me up with his friend CJ who has a piece of property right here. We slipped in in the dark. We could see the deer starting to come out. Now you will see a feeder, but that feeder didn't even go off. We didn't hunt just a feeder. We put some corn down the road in the dark before we got in a stand. Just check out how many deer we saw. Now comes the bad part and the reason why I don't film whitetail deer hunts. I filmed like 15 clips this morning and every one of them was perfect. I also filmed shooting the deer and guess what? That is the only clip I don't have. My camera didn't save it. I don't know what happened. Woosa! But what I do have is the deer laying there freshly killed and getting stuck in the blind, which is probably the funniest part of the, about the morning. I absolutely love that part. So let's take it back to the deer hunt. We're gonna show you the recovery all the way back to the house of the kids. And then we're gonna clean this buck, load the boat up, which is right here, and go catfishing. We got a huge dead buck right over there. We're stuck in the tree stand. <laughs> we're stuck. We're stuck in the tree stand straight up. Yeah. 
not gonna get out. What? Hold on, hold on. <coughs> oh, hold on. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I've seen it all now, folks. We, we were stuck in a stand. We got him though. The good stuff. My first buck with the new rifle. We done piled one up. He was posturing that other deer big time. Oh yeah, he was about to go at it for sure. And it's funny because he was going at the smaller one, not the bigger one. Yeah. There was deer coming from everywhere this morning. God, you can smell him. Smell rutted up there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, big old bruiser. The other buck we saw was actually bigger, but the other buck was younger, so we decided to let him live. We got this one. Oh. See what happens when you send two hunters to the woods? There you go. Falcon Lake low fence action, baby. Low fence is the key word. Bro, it was fixing to get wild. Really? There was three good bucks. Everything was starting. The problem was is there were so many deer you couldn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> One of the coolest things about becoming a dad is getting to do what my dad used to do to us, and that's coming home and saying, boys, come look in the back of the truck. You guys have no idea what old CJ put us on this morning. Things were getting real in the woods. Sure. Luke, you got your pocket knife? No. <laughs> I didn't bring one on the plane. He couldn't bring you got to clean plane. this deer for us. You already know I got my Dankos, and if you need a good knife, dankopliers.com, three-piece knife set, which Crystal hijacked one of them. It's in the kitchen right now. I'm gonna use the seven inch pro series. We're gonna knock the hide off this deer, put it on ice eat it all week long and we're going catfishing but i can't show you unfortunately how to clean a deer in this video because i don't want it to get demonetized y'all check out the size of this boat ramp look at ram yes he felt like giving the four to wash the boat ramp starts way up there all right we gotta get the straps off <laughs> luke just said there's a pieball duck my new trailer's got these straps and I forget them on there about half the time and I try to put the boat in the water and it won't come off the trailer and I'm pissed off mad and then I remember those straps. Ram, when was the last time the lake was up that high? Yeah, there's a pie ball. But I can remember 2010. So 2010, it was up there near that sign. And now look how low it is. And it's actually up from what it was a little while back, right? Yes, sir, it actually is. It was down there probably another 20 feet? Yes, sir. Yeah, all these rocks are exposed out here. So what's the plan? We're going to go get bait? We're going to get some bait with Juan. We don't have to throw the cast net, get wet, have to hunt them down. And we're going to go check some stuff on the edge of the river channel right now and see if they're hanging out there. I don't think the water temp is where it needs to be where they can move up into the shallow flats, but we'll check it out. Stay tuned. What on earth do you have? I have some toys for Juan's kids. Can we talk a little bit more about us getting stuck in the, in the ground blind this morning? Well, I forgot that the latch on the outside is loose. <laughs> so when you close the door, the latch closes on you. So <laughs> you, you know what I was thinking about earlier? I'm like, man, imagine if you were an elder man or something and somebody, you just went down there to hunt. No That'd service. be a bad way to go. No, no service. service. We had no service in that tree stand. <laughs> CJ's practicing to become a police officer, so he got to kick down his first door in a while. I know that. You want to now tell us what those toys and coloring books are for? Juan's mm, kids. So Mr. Juan is actually a Mexican citizen. That's a Mexico. That's America. Fresh deer jerky from Mexico oh, that he wow. made. Thank he you. made us that deer jerky? Bonato? That's me. Bonato? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That's for, hey, if you get tired, you can color, do some books. If the fish aren't biting, you can 
Just draw. <laughs> Those are actually for ones. <laughs> no, 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 we're in, man. <laughs> Boom. He's never bored. He's always, he's always busy out here. He's always playing. Thank you. The pig has <laughs> Thank you very much. Deer jerky? <laughs> yeah. You say banana, right? Banana here. I want some. What's banana jerky? Deer. Banado. Deer jerky. I'm going to try some. Yeah, let me get awesome. the boat out of here. The last, yeah. time, the last time I was in Mexico, I ate horse meat. And donkey. Are you sure it's not horse? So we have to be very careful not to get on this side of the line. It's like a happy medium. You see that pole in the distance? Pole in the distance, you got to be right in the middle. Now it's time to go fishing. Gracias. Yes, sir. Gracias, Juan. Is it good, Jake? Oh, yeah. Ready to rip? Oh. I like this yeah. boat. You don't feel the waves hardly. You can hold that, eat it, it's all up. You all have at it. So how did he make that jerky, you think? So this jerky here was harvested in Mexico. It was what they called filleted. It was filleted in Mexico and hung on a string right on the edge of the river according to conditions when there's no flies. That's how that was made. No dehydrator, no smokehouse, just mother nature doing its thing on the meat. Dang! We can't do that at home, we got too many flies. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Like today's a prime day, excuse me. Today's a prime day to hang meat. Yeah. Got the sun out and the wind blowing, no flies. Huh. That's how they make it in uh, Rota and Zaipan too. But they use screen enclosures to keep the flies off. All right, let's go rip. Ready to go. I'll tell you something crazy. That big structure over there is where the guys on the Mexico side watch out for our guys on the American side. We won't name any names, but you got some important people over there watching some important people over there. Who's ready? Can we see a show of hands who's ready to catch a catfish? This is the coolest thing about fishing these days. The electronics are absolutely out of this world. He said there's a big creek here and he's looking for some rocks. I don't want to get into detail with exactly what he's looking for because this is what Ram does for a living. If you ever want to come here and go deer hunting or hunt anything for that matter, catch giant gars or huge catfish, check out Ram Outdoors. Check out the size of that circle hook, Jake. I know. That's what we would fish for like Goliath grouper with. There's catfish out here that big? Yes, sir. Who makes these hooks? That is Dragon Master. You can find them at www.dragonmaster.com. One of the cool features that they come out with that I really like is one, how the point of this hook isn't real thin in diameter. And I've noticed that the thinner points lose sharpness. This uh, hook here held its sharpness pretty well. And it comes with this real unique uh, weed guard, almost like a bass fishing hook. So when dragging through structure, uh, you have a lot more better opportunity of coming through that structure without getting hung up. I like it. These are some cool looking weights. Cat fishermen get serious. You know that, right? Like cat fishermen are some of the serious doohickey fishermen in the world. They got doohickeys for everything. <laughs> so what are we working with? This is carp or shad? Gizzard shad, big gizzard shad. What else you got in there? I got some more and then I got some. I like this cooler with the cutting board on top. Tipitilius? Tipitilius. That's a fresh tilapia. And no, Luke, we can't fry that and give it to you right now. It's it's for the catfish, not you. Whenever you throw these, you just keep your thumb on it and let it go. Dang! Oh, it's big. Come up front. You'll have to trade it off. Come up. Watch out, watch out. I got it. Come on up front. She's got a big one. He's around the other rod. We're good. She's got it. Go around. Go over top that next rod. Luke, stay out of the way. Got it. Lukey, come back here. Let's try to land him right here. He's going to have a lot of fight left in him. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> net him now that we're up front. 
This is a good one to weigh. Super light color. He's barely hooked too. Nice. Oh yeah. We are on the board. Nice. God. That's a beautiful fish. Little chunker. I love He's their heavy. muscles right here. These Maybe muscles not. right here are so big. 13 2. We like might as well keep oh, one. That's an eater for sure. Let's keep the first one for good luck. You got it. 13 2. Write that down, babe. 13 2. We need some of these for limb lining. Yeah. Because one of us is eventually going to get hooked. Yeah. Or break a wrist. Or break a wrist. Then big ones sure. grab a hold and start spinning. No bueno. Mm -mm. Well, we've moved spots about three times. We've only got one fish in the boat, but we think the best is yet to come. If you've never thrown a conventional like this with mono, it can definitely be tricky. We got more bait slicing up here. How about these socks? Rigging and jigging. Y'all, these are my favorite EFC socks. I like the colors on them. Yeah, if socks are your thing and you like colorful, crazy socks, they have every kind you could ever imagine. EFC, EvergladesFishingCO.com. Well, Jake's got two We're different kinds. I know. He's... We got two different kinds. We got just regular got EFC and we got some blue coconut. All right, guys. The last time you saw us was obviously yesterday, but we had some things come up. We had to stop fishing for the afternoon. We're back at it first thing in the morning. Just got the baits out. The sun's just rising. Look at that ram. It don't get no prettier than that. Oh, no. Nice oh, eating cat. size cat and a beautiful sunrise. So Crystal's actually over here about 400 yards duck hunting. She said, after the amount of birds we saw yesterday, look at that, there was thousands of them. She had to get her shotgun. She bought her hunting license and her federal duck stamp and she's over there duck hunting. Addison and Luke said it was way too cold this morning so they slept in. It's just me, CJ, Ram, and Jake. And hopefully we whack their butt this morning. It's already a good start. We already got one, so fingers crossed. Jake, turn around and just enjoy that sunrise. Yeah. Listen to the birds. So we just heard Crystal shoot there. for the first time. Man, that's gorgeous. Look at my ducks. I see some spoonbills. Look at this gadwall. Is that your first gadwall? Yeah. Y'all look at her out here all by herself this morning. Got her decoys out. Got her some ducks. That's a good picture. Her first gadwall. Her first shoveler. Yesterday when we came in here, oh, it was much that. later, but there was pintails everywhere. That duck is heavy. For how little he is. Drill. Oh, that's a... Is that a tree or is that the fish? No, 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 don't give him slack, Jake. Stay on him. P pull him out. It's a big one. Oh, big one. God. Big one, bro. Holy mackerel. I thought you had a tree. Come up here, Jake. Help him come I up here. I keep him right here. I keep him right here. Okay. I'll stay up here then. I'm working, bud. How's that drag? Jake's got a giant on. We just put Crystal right over there on the bank. She's still duck hunting. And we're trying to rip some lips. Just stay on him. Don't, don't hold him too much. He's up on the surface. They normally do that? Yes, sir. I wonder why they would come up to the surface for. I thought he had a tree. Oh, that's a good one. Look at the ducks right there. Uh oh, they better not mess up and go right over there. We've been sitting here for, oh my goodness. We've been sitting here for about 30 minutes with no bite. And this is what you're waiting for. Doing good, Jake. This might be your biggest cat, Jake. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. Oh my gosh. This is it a grande? How do you say it? A grande? grande. Oh. Don't let him touch the boat. Dude, that's a, I would say 50 pounder oh, yeah, all day pounder. long. Jake, you just caught your biggest catfish ever. Catfish. Jake. Woo! 
we just give the Mexican gill netters on the other side a good holler. They Jake, just ho they just hollered at us. Jake, that is a giant Massive size. Massive catfish. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest blue cat I've ever seen, besides the ones we noodled. Caught him on a big old circle hook. That fish is big. Ram outdoors. Yes, sir. Right here, right now, live action. You guys, he's got a nice boat. He's got good gear, the, actually the best gear. Everything's comfortable. He brings, you know, a cooler with drinks. He's got a windshield so you won't freeze. Good light bar. Like, this is top notch guiding at its finest. Look at that mouth. You want to move on? All right, we just got Beachy back in the boat and Jake's about to show her his new Falcon Lake record. Look in that whale, babe. Don't get scared now. Yeah, it's as big as you are. Look at that. Look thing. at the head on that thing. Good <laughs> job, Jake. Thank you. So we just found out what we have to do. We're gonna weigh it with this scale and another new one just like it. And we gotta send both scales off and they're gonna get it certified. Correct. And that's how we'll certify that fish's weight. I have the same one and they're accurate. They are. All right, let's let Beachy get some snacks, a drink, put her back out. Let's go catch another one 10 pounds bigger. You <laughs> ready? Let's do it. Try it. Come Good on. job, guys. Oh, he's on there. Yep. Fish on. I hate to tell y'all, though, it ain't as big as Jake's dinosaur. They put me up here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That might be the boat moving. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't a baby. You guys, the weather has changed so much today. It's insane. That's a nice one. Yeah. Look at the belly on that thing. And he's pooping. We're not going to officially weigh this one. We'll just call him five pounds. See you, buddy. That's fish number four. Going with just a nice little shed head we just made about a 15 to 20 mile run we picked crystal up got her in the boat and now we're way up the rio grande river trying something different shallow water a little bit dirtier water it's been a little bit slow but one thing with ram he knows this lake and this river system like the back of his hand so he has spots all over the place we got out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rods. We got eight. Got a big one on it, looks like. It feels like a good one. He's coming up to the surface. We've been sitting here being patient. The bad thing is, is we're sort of out of snacks. Not sort of, we are out of snacks. That's not a good thing. Luke ate them all yesterday. This fish is heavy. He's getting in. He's coming in close. We've had like turtles and stuff hitting all six of these rods. Nice one. It's a good one. Oh yeah. Probably a 15 pounder. I tell you what, these orange things are growing on me. Normally I'm just dumb and stick my hand in there and it gets all tore up. Like normal, a circle hook. Hooked right in the corner of his mouth. If you've never caught a blue catfish, they bite hard. We need to weigh him, he's a chunker. Yes, sir. We need to put him on the tally board. 19, 18? 18.9? No, 20. 20.7. 20 20.7, 20 we'll call them an even 20 because of these orange things are on there. It's not a bad fish. What are we at now? We're looking for his great grandpa. Look at his colors. He looks like it's albino. Hey guys. See ya buddy. All right, we're pulling back up to the dock. Ram's wife has another scale. We're gonna weigh this fish with two of them. And we're also gonna show Luke and Addison this giant fish. Luke, we caught a catfish 
bigger than you. Look how big he is. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> She's laughing now. We just got back to the dock. We've had this fish in the bait well, which Ram's about to pull it out right now for about an hour, and we got to zero out this scale. You can see right there that the net weighs about 1.1 pounds, but if we hit this button, now the net weighs zero because we just recalculated it. He's gonna pull the fish out. We're gonna put it in this net and hold it up and get one final weight. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this other brand new scale. And Ram and his wife are gonna send both of these off and get them, what do you call it? Certified. Certified. So they're IGFA certified. And potentially this fish will be the biggest catfish ever caught on this lake. All right, let's roll. Don't drop him at this point. I'd hate to have to go swimming with the fishes. Dude, tell me that ain't a mega giant. That is a monster. Sixty point three. Sixty forty four. Sixty pounds, forty four ounces. Right there, there's nothing but fish and net. Sixty forty four. All right, time to measure this ginormous fish. You got it right? I'm gonna put him on this line to use it as a marker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right Say when. It's ready right there. We're gonna be safe, but it's 47 inches long. I'm going off of this line right here to 47 inches. Okay, that's a giant. And just like that, we're back where it all began with the big fish. We're not exactly back though, cause we're sort of trying to hide the spot a little bit. I guess you could rewind it and try to catch you some landlines, but we're only about 400 yards from where we caught her and we're gonna turn her loose right here. Ram, you get to wrestle her one more time. To show you how strong she is, you couldn't break that plastic with your hand if you had to and she twisted one time and shattered it. Look at that mouth. Bro, she could swallow a 10 pound bass, no problem. One more cool shot. Turn around into the sun. Giant. Y'all look at her, she's huge. All right, let's turn big girl loose. How are you gonna do that gracefully? I'm try as hard as I can. See you later, girl. Hey, she lives to fight another day. That's right. See Falcon you. Lake record. Woo, that water's cold. All right, you guys, not only is Ram one heck of a catfish guide, he's about to get into the duck hunting. And I told you earlier, Crystal and Jake were out here duck hunting. Crystal killed her limit earlier this morning, and I think Jake's got his limit, but look at this first. That's Ram's catfish boat. Ram also has a duck hunting boat that he's in the process of putting a new motor on. Dude, look at the view. I mean, would you just look at it? But you want to see the best view of the day? Check that out, boys and girls. Yeah, we only brought one pair of waders and we actually didn't bring them, they're rams. We have brand new frog tog waders at home in Florida and didn't bring them. All right, duck hunters, how was it in Texas? It was amazing, other than the last bird. The last bird I'm actually glad I got. So I have this beautiful pintail. That That's I, a widgeon. That's oh, a no, Drake widgeon. A widgeon. Dang, and boy. Your first widgeon? Drake. Green wing? Green wing. And I have more. All the rest of them are hen green wing. Hey, that's All good. Was it pretty? It was beautiful. Look at that sunset. How was your duck hunt this, this morning? Dang, boy. 
that last duck crystal what can i on say video, i chased that duck in circles <laughs> are you filmed Just catch him. <laughs> Let me see, hold him up. I've never fought so hard for a duck in my life. Nice job. <laughs> it's hard to run in them lighters. Nice job. Son, you did some shooting. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Let me tell you how bad that hurts on my freezing cold feet. Oh, Here, hand me your shotgun and I'll take that to the boat real quick. And then I got to come back and give Crystal a ride because Jake's the only one with waders on. Jake, we need to pick all these bullets up too. You guys, I've said it a bunch of times in this video, but I'm going to end it right now saying it again. Ram Outdoors. I'll put all of his information right here. Catfish, gars, all the exotics, big white tails, javelinas, and ducks. You can't go wrong. Come here to Texas. It's safe. You can fly into Laredo. Ram's got an awesome house to rent right next door to his house. It's too easy not to come. It's super cheap. It's affordable to fly into Laredo. Hey, we did it, and y'all dang sure can do it. All right, we're gonna end it with this beautiful sunset. This is an expensive Uber. I couldn't end it with the sunset because I forgot all about this ride. I had to get back to the boat. Now we can end it. We'll catch y'all in the next one. <laughs>